Iraq's vice president is a wanted man. His allies say the country is being driven into sectarian conflict. Is the arrest warrant for Tara El Hashimi politically motivated? And with U.S. troops now gone, is Iraq about to become more unstable? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, Iraq's vice president has strongly denied claims he ran a death squad that targeted senior politicians. An arrest warrant has been issued for allegedly planning attacks against government officials. Tariq El Hashimi is a Sunni and an outspoken critic of the Shia Prime Minister Nouri El Maliki. His political bloc is boycotting the cabinet and has accused the Prime Minister of trying to divide the country. In a moment, we'll look at what this means for Iraq's government. First, Omar Saleh reports from Baghdad. From vice president to a wanted man, Iraqi judges issued an arrest warrant against Tariq al-Hashimi after viewing evidence provided by the Ministry of Interior. The state media aired confessions made by Hashimi's bodyguards, saying he gave them orders to carry out a number of attacks. Political sources allege that Hashimi was involved in a car bomb attack last month, which targeted Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. They stormed the house of Vice President Tariq al-Hashimi. This is a very dangerous indication because Hashimi is one of the main leaders of the Iraqiya and the founder of the political process that has been going on for the past nine years. These accusations and this violation of his house is a blow to the partnership between the big political blocs. The recent developments are threatening to plunge Iraq into a political limbo. The cross-sectarian Al-Iraqiyya bloc, which Hashimi is a member of, has suspended its participation in parliament. The bloc, led by Ayad Allaw, is also withdrawing its ministers from the cabinet. Both moves can paralyze the fragile coalition government and threaten the entire political process. This is a criminal case which the judiciary has already dealt with. It does not matter anymore if the Arakeya bloc pulls out of the government. They have been hindering the progress of the political process in the country since it began. They are trying to fail the whole political Iraqi project. And this is what many Iraqis fear, political infighting and mistrust that might reflect directly on security of the Iraqi people, which means further instability and violence. Iraq is facing its first challenge just 48 hours after the last U.S. soldier left the country. The government says it's a judicial case that has no relation with the U.S. withdrawal. But opponents of Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki say he's trying to consolidate his grip on power and attack his political rivals. Omar Saleh, Al Jazeera, Baghdad. On Tuesday, El Hashimi held a press conference in the Kurdish town of Erbil where he dismissed the accusations against him as purely political. The accused is innocent until proven guilty, but the goal and intentions here are clear. This is a politically motivated attack and nothing more. In a brief statement, the Iraqi president commented on the latest development regarding his vice president. Jalal Talabani said he was, quote, surprised at the announcement of the warrant. He added that the issue needs to be dealt with quietly. Well, after a long impasse, Iraq's main political parties agreed to a power-sharing deal last year. The deal splits the prime minister's office, presidency, two deputy prime ministers and two vice presidents among Shia, Sunni and Kurdish officials. Earlier this week, the Iraqiya bloc suspended its participation in parliament in protest at Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's continued hold on key ministries. Iraqiya is a secular bloc but has the support of many Sunnis. El Maliki is accused of cracking down on political opponents in addition to the arrest warrant issued against Tariq El Hashimi. El Maliki has called for a vote of no confidence in his own deputy, Saleh El Mutlaq. El Hashimi and El Mutlaq are the top two Sunni politicians in Iraq. So are the charges against the Iraqi vice president politically motivated? And what effect will this have on the Iraqi political scene? Well, joining us now to talk more about this in Baghdad, we have with us Saad Il Mutalabi, a member of the State of Law Coalition and a former director of international affairs at the Ministry of National Dialogue. From Erbil, Hiwa Osman is a writer and commentator, as well as a former media advisor to the president, Talibani, and a former 
BBC journalist. And in London, we're joined by Ali Al Safar, a Middle East analyst at the Econ uh, Economic Intelligence Unit. Welcome to uh, all of you. We also want to point out that we approached the uh, Iraqiya bloc, but their spokespeople declined our invitation to appear on the program. Uh, Mr. Saad uh, El Mutalbi, if I could start with you. Now, uh, Mr. Hashemi, as I'm sure you've heard, uh, has said that there's no truth. Uh, to any of these charges and that this is all politically motivated and that this is all in fact coming from your Prime Minister Nouri El Maliki. Your response? Uh, well, he should say this in a court of law and he should uh, state his innocence uh, in state of law and uh, also he should uh, face the people who charged him with these accusations. Um, not many people know that uh, one of the accused, one of the terrorists, uh, he himself brought himself forward and surrendered to the Iraqi authorities and he spoke of the uh, atrocities that he and his colleagues were conducting. Now we don't know if it's true or not, that's his words and we need the, uh, Mr. Tariq al-Hashimi to come and defend himself and show us the truth. If he were really a member or he instructed his crew to commit some atrocities or to inst uh, create instability in the country, we don't know. This, these are the accusations and we expect uh, Mr. Al-Hashimi to come and clear his name and clear his uh, position because after all he was elected uh, a member of parliament and then selected from the parliament into the position of the deputy president. So there is an obligation for him to come forward uh, to Baghdad because the, the, the crimes were committed in Baghdad and uh, the crime scenes are all in Baghdad so he needs to be here in Baghdad defending himself and his name. But as you know, uh, Mr. Hashemi has uh, uh, long been a political rival of your prime minister. And when you say that he will have a chance to clear his name, will, be he, will he be able to do that uh, in a fair system uh, and under uh, an atmosphere right now that is so politically tense? Of course, he has, the, the, he has all the amnesties that he requires. Uh, uh, this is not a savage country. We respect people's rights. We respect uh, uh, accus accused rights. Uh, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Uh, they sh there could be a committee from the parliament to oversee all the legal proceedings. All these are possible to achieve. But he needs to come to Baghdad and make sure that he is part of this new process to clear his name. Uh, uh, we need to s stress on the issue that uh, w the whole thing is not political. There is a legal case. Five judges, first degree judges of Iraq, issued a warrant for his arrest. It cannot be five judges who are from different uh, sects uh, of uh, Iraq. They cannot all be belonging to Mr. Maliki. Those people issued a warrant, a very clear warrant. First, they issued a warrant for him not to leave the country. The second warrant was for his arrest or for him to come forward and be part of the investigation. So it's, it's very clear. It's nothing to do with politics. Uh, uh, political rivalry does, is not solved this way. There are other means of uh, uh, resolving political differences. Hewa Osman, you heard the comments uh, there uh, from uh, Saad al that there, that there is nothing political um, in any of this. What's your response to that? And what should we read as well into the timing of this uh, coming just two days after the last US troops pulled out of Iraq? Well, I think the key thing here is to demonstrate, to show by uh, exactly how this is not going to be politicized or sectarianized. Uh, the, the whole setup of, the, uh, of, the bro of broadcasting the confessions is illegal as far as any investigation is concerned. I think as a journalist, as a, uh, it's always the case that this is a clear contempt of court to air uh, confessions before uh, having them uh, heard in a court of law and before have completing the trial c c fairly and properly. Uh, the, the other thing is that the timing of this is all sad to uh, almost suspicious because uh, from what we heard, uh, from what transpired, that the, the pressure on Mr. Uh, Hashimi was there for quite some time, as he said today in his press conference. 
and to choose the timing a few days after the departure of the last uh, two days after the departure of the last US soldier and a few days before Christmas and New Year's holidays I think uh, it just sheds uh, casts a shadow of doubt on uh, on the procedure itself and the way how the, the, the process is being led politically and not through judges or through uh, people of uh, law enforcement is, uh, is, sounding, is sending the wrong signal. I want to get Saad Al Mutalabi's uh, response to, to some of what you just said in, in just a moment. But first, I want to turn to uh, Ali Al Safar in, in uh, London and get his take on this. I mean, do you fear that this uh, raises uh, uh, the possibility of more political and sectarian tensions in the country? certainly do that if it's managed incorrectly, which it seems to be right now. Um, in Iraq, as in most places, uh, certainly in the region and the rest of the world, uh, perception usually trumps reality. And the perception here, uh, and it's quite an understandable perception, is that this is a politicized uh, a, a movement a, a against uh, Tariq al-Hashimi. Now, it's, uh, we, we could point to the fact that Tariq al-Hashimi has had a long list of accusations made against him Going back to 2005, I think it was Mithal al-Alusi who, who, who first made accusations against him. Um, so, you know, this, isn't, this is by no means new. But I think the timing and the way it's been managed since um, obviously are going to raise uh, that, that topic of politicization, of sectar sectarianization. Um, and so we need to be wary of that. It, it could end up being a divisive issue when in actual fact uh, it needn't be. Uh, and so uh, the way the government uh, responds to this in the short and medium term could in fact uh, determine the, the, the trajectory of, of how the government looks uh, in six to eight months time as well. Uh, so I think all of that needs to be taken into consideration. All right, Saad al Mutalabi, um, a response to some of what you've heard uh, just there, because when you say that this is not politicized and whether any of these accusations uh, are true or not is, is something we'll, we'll put aside uh, just for a moment because a lot of this you have to concede is about uh, perception the perception uh, as far as the, the, the timing uh, of all of this the way it, it, which in which it has been handled the circumstances and so on two issues here uh, is this matter is not about perceptions about people's lives about people that lost their lives uh, not for any reason uh, uh, that is just just a number of criminals uh, uh, participated in taking people's life and uh, through assassination or bombing. So uh, it, I may differ with the, uh, our friend from London who sees it from London as a matter of perception. But here we are the government or the, the whole uh, political atmosphere or the general atmosphere is, uh, is boiling. People want to know what the truth is. Uh, the other thing is, I'm glad that we hear from uh, Arab, from uh, Soleimani or Kurdistan the view from Mr. Talibani uh, and thinking that this is politicized by his speaker or his secretary. And uh, that is quite important for us to know uh, uh, the president is siding uh, with uh, Mr. Al Hashimi, because after all, we we consider we considered the uh, PUK as a strategic ally to um, national uh, alliance here in Baghdad. And uh, the people's blood is not a matter that we could uh, hold deals or political uh, pacts on. Uh, justice must take its, uh, its course. We must know if uh, Mr. Hashimi is innocent or guilty. This ma matter need to be cleared away from politics. And as we stand today, uh, we have instructed and we have been instructed to make sure that this is a legal issue and it has nothing to do with politics and we will not speak about politicizing this particular case. That's why I say that Mr. Tariq al Hashimi needs to come to Baghdad and meet with the judges and make sure to present his case and his innocence in a court of law. Hey, well, Osman, you want to respond to that? I think, yes, uh, first of all, I, I think Mr. Mutalibi mis, uh, misheard my title. I am a former advisor. I have no longer work for President Jalal Talabani. But uh, I can tell you, I read his statement this morning, and he is talking about depoliticizing uh, 
uh, the, he is stressing the importance of depoliticizing it. By saying this, he doesn't mean that it is politicized. And then to, I think Mr. Mutalibi is contradicting himself by talking about PUK and National Alliance coalition when we are talking about a judicial case. Uh, I would have rather, uh, I would have rather heard, I would have liked to hear from uh, Mr. Mutalibi that President Talabani has sworn to protect the Constitution and the upholding of the Constitution. I think this is the key thing here. The, the other issue, the other wrong message, I think a case like this is sending uh, to the people is that the selective nature, I think, although it is, a, it is one of the cases that exist, there are so many crimes in Iraq that have been committed and the, the perpetrators are still at large. The killers of Mr. Uh, of the late Majid al khui Sayyid Majid al khui are still at large and there are all kinds of arrest warrants and everything else for them but nothing is being done in that regard so to, to go after uh, I'm in no way saying that this is the, it is an invalid case it could well be it should be left for the court but to have the whole political ruling political establishment behind this case only and not behind other cases like the killers of Sayyid Majid al Khoui, uh, this sends the, definitely the wrong message that the political process is polit that the, the judicial process in Iraq is sectarianized and politicized. Saad al Mutalibi, you, you want to respond to that? I know you you say that this is yes, not politically yes, yes. motivated, <laughs> but what's your response to what you've just heard there from our guest in Erbil that a lot of this is selective? Uh, well, um, he, he is partly wrong because uh, uh, matters are presented to the courts when evidence are available. Uh, you cannot uh, choose a, a partic particular problem and present it to the courts without any evidence. I, I agree with, uh, with uh, Nabil that there are many uh, unsolved issues, there are many unsolved murders that we need to find and find the perpetrators and make sure that they are presented to justice. Uh, I also read uh, the uh, uh, communique from the president today and he insisted that uh, nobody should interfere with the legal proceedings of this particular case and that's why I think uh, President Albani uh, who we respect greatly is uh, with us on board on this issue and he considered that the legal proceedings must take precedence over all other aspects in this case and he made sure and asked everybody not to politicize this issue and it because it's a, a simple uh, and or it's a legal case and must remain as such uh, so I don't think we differ on this matter. I do apologize. I thought you were uh, working for now for uh, President Talabani. I do present my apologies to you, sir. All right. Absolutely. Glad we've got that um, discrepancy out of the way. I want to turn to uh, Alia Safar in London for some of your thoughts on this. Do, Sin do Sunnis um, and the other um, blocs in Iraq, for that matter, fear that the U.S. departure could now mean the loss of a protector there? Well, I'd like to first answer the bit about perceptions because I yeah, do differ do. with Mr. Muttalabi. In a highly charged sectarian atmosphere like Iraq, where communities are still building bridges and haven't exactly healed from the atrocities that happened between 2006 and 2008, perceptions do matter. Because when a community feels like, when it feels, when it, when it perceives that it's being under attack, then these, these can have massive ramifications on the street. Iraq is by no means a secure place. And so what people perceive is going to play out or can play out. And we don't want to see that happening again. As far as the loss of a protector, I'm sure that people in Iraqiya, um, who I don't represent, by the way, so I can't speak on their behalf, um, and even in the Sunni community, would uh, bulk at the suggestion that the US is their protector. But at the same time, um, maybe one uh, potential um, a backer or, or, or a mediator uh, is, is, now, is now gone. Uh, the U.S. has mediated in political um, uh, crises uh, for the last few years. And so with, with their withdrawal, that, that takes out that part of the equation. Um, and it really remains to be seen um, how mature the Iraqi political uh, parties are in, 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 in mediating uh, a solution to this 
to what has become a political problem, whether it's whether the judiciary is politicized or not right now, uh, maybe, maybe not. But this problem has become political, and the political parties are going to have to prove their worth by, um, by toning down the rhetoric uh, and presenting uh, an alternative to uh, outright uh, a slugging match. Mr. Um, uh, a lot of people in Iraq as well are worried about how all of this is affecting uh, the development uh, of your country, the, this festering uh, discontent over the, the, the pace of things there, uh, and the fact that the country is not entirely secure, let, secure yet, uh, uh, plagued by uh, daily bombings, um, bureaucracy, cl crumbling infrastructure, all of those things. And it needs to attract billions uh, of dollars of, uh, in foreign investment as well to rebuild uh, the country's battered economy, um, and of course, there's public anger over the lack of jobs and, and all of those things. I mean, the, the constant political wrangling can't help all of those efforts, can it? Uh, Mr. Maliki today uh, issued a, uh, an invitation to all political parties, heads of political parties, to gather in Baghdad and to uh, uh, have a meeting where all matters is clarified the security issues from the non-security issues, the political cooperation, all these matters will be discussed among the leaders and uh, explaining, he will probably explain to the leaders all the evidence that he has and why this case is as it is. And uh, so I see um, among, uh, uh, among all these problems, there are people who are presenting solutions and trying to come up with a workable solution that will lead to uh, resolving this tension that is, uh, is quite high, at, as, uh, as our friends have also already mentioned in Baghdad. And this tension needs to be reduced uh, slightly and make sure that uh, people return or life return to, its no to normality. One of the things Mr. Hashimi, uh, one of the reasons Mr. Hashimi says um, he's not willing to present himself uh, in Baghdad for this is that because he doesn't believe he's going to get a fair trial there. Um, if this trial were to take place in Erbil, where he is now, is that something that your, uh, that your block would be open to? No, so the legal people say crime scenes are here, are here in Baghdad. Crimes were committed here in Baghdad, and uh, access to the crime scenes need to be available to the courts uh, and the accused. So the, I don't think they will, we would not agree to that, definitely. We, uh, uh, we would not agree from the idea point of view, not from a legal, because we are not a legal group, we are a political group. But this matter is left to the legal system to decide, and the legal system say that because of the uh, crime scenes uh, investigation and all that, it needs to be here uh, done and conducted here in Baghdad. And also the people who are uh, 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 presented uh, the, the legal cases, the family of the deceased uh, are here in Baghdad and they want uh, easy access to the courts right. here I want to get I want to get a response just in the, in the time that we have left uh, the last word to you uh, Mr. Uh, Hewa Osman how do you see all of this uh, playing out over the coming weeks do you think things will continue uh, in this direction I think the key issue that's missing here is trust between the political blocs and between the two main components of Iraq the political blocs and the United States of America have over the eight, past eight years failed to build a new, to open a new page in Iraq and build trust amongst the Shia and Sunni of Iraq. Let's be frank here. The whole issue boils down to this, whether the fact to, to hold a trial in Erbil or in Baghdad or in Basra is neither here nor there. Saddam Hussein was tried in Baghdad for crimes he committed in Kurdistan. Uh, the rest uh, of the former regime were tried in Baghdad for crimes they did not all commit in Baghdad. So I think this argument here, uh, it all it sends us the wrong message of, of, of a, a politicized uh, trial. I think the key issue here is to demonstrate professionally and politically that we will not interfere in the process of the trial and we will guarantee a fair trial will be guaranteed to whoever proper due process will take place with any case regardless of who the perpetrator is all right the way things are now I that think is that is going uh, to have to be the last th word we're, unfortunately we're out of time we'll have to leave it there uh, but i want to thank uh, all three of our guests uh, uh saad el mutalabi in baghdad hewa osman in erbil and ali al-safar in london many thanks for your time
And that's it for this edition of Inside Story. Remember, if you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. I'm Hazem Seeker. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.